Good morning, Tristan speaking. At the moment, we are some 90 miles to the east southeast of Calgary in Sardinia, and looking ahead to run ashore there, it's clear we have a busy couple of days. As you know, 43 members of the ship's company, I'd like to say the lucky ones, will be leaving by RAF Hercules aircraft and returning to the UK as part of the advance maintenance party. In addition, Captain Rapp will also be leaving the ship and flying home to take up his new appointment in the MOD. And before he goes, he'll be handing over command to Captain Somerville on Tuesday afternoon. Of course, before returning to the UK, there's our very last run ashore in Gibraltar. That's all. I've got five days now before I'm relieved. So uh, it's going to be um, you know, an emotional time to leave. It always is. Um, ship becomes part of you, or you, and you become part of the ship. And in my case, at the moment, there are two ladies in the life. This grey mistress here, plus wife and family at home. Command of the ship is a very personal thing, and after a period of busyness like this, it, it you become an integral part of your life. I'll be handing over the ship brilliant to um, Captain Angus Somerville in five days' time. Because he's leaving, he's writing reports on all of the officers on board. I've got my personal assessment discussion with the captain. I never like reports. There's always bound to be some bad bits. You think, well, it's not my fault. That's a character defect. So. I don't know, we'll see. My ultimate hope is that he'll give me my bridge watch-keeping ticket before he leaves, whether or not he does it. I still don't know. Right. Oh, God! Tall and slim with dark hair and a cheerful exterior, Lovegrove arrived very determined to recognise as having much to offer and confident of showing it. She's intelligent and always seeks a proper understanding. As her experience grows, she is appreciating more fully her role as an officer, listening sympathetically and now also more objectively to her men and women. Oh, come let us adore Lovegrove is exceedingly well motivated and is set on a professional career in the Royal Navy. I do not yet feel she's ready for a British watch, watch keeping certificate since she needs time to consolidate in a busier shipping environment and more demanding warfare scenarios. So, are you disappointed? Yes and no. I think I knew you were going to say that you weren't going to give it to me and I think it's probably right. But even so, you always, you always hope mm. that you will get it. Because, mm. yeah, I would have liked to come back from the diploma. Of course you would. <laughs> Fair haired and thinning on top. Hawkins is a powerfully built man of average height. He wears his heart on his breast and always gives his all. A more loyal and dedicated officer would be hard to find. Socially, Hawkins is an extrovert and good fun. He's never far from the action. And um, some of you might prefer to hear here as preparation for command of him, a minor war vessel for which he's now ready. Tall, slim and athletic, Cook Priest projects a composed and confident air. Smart and personable, he is a compassionate and thoughtful demeanour, making him popular at every level. A strong personality is complemented by a practical leadership style and clear power of command. Cook Priest is a dry, quick-witted sense of humour which makes him good and lively company. Cook Priest impresses and has considerable potential. Now armed with plenty of operational flying experience, he's well on track in his development as an aviator, as an officer. Right, that's all I've got to say to you. Do you want to chip anything back to me? No, I'm very pleased with that, obviously. Sing in exaltation, sing all ye citizens. What do you say? Well, I got what I wanted. Did you? <clears throat> yeah. You think you can do more or less? I'm not too heavy with that. Yeah, I am. That's quite surprising. Why were you surprised? Well, I thought I'd been a bit more of a reprobate than that. <laughs> right. This is the first report for nine months. Professional side, anti-surface warfare director at Action Stations. He performs very well and is a vital and respected member of the AIO team. Overall, a highly professional man and a strong asset to the ship. There's not too many, uh, not too many bad points in that one, is there? No, that's all right, isn't it? Okay. General report: Gobel is a mature, well-built, jovial man with a cheerful disposition and a confident manner. He has an extremely well-developed sense of humour and is noted for his witty repartee. Liked and well-respected by his contemporaries, 
He shows good leadership among the junior rates and has all the potential to make a strong petty officer. The combination of professionalism and likability and character mark Gobel out as a superior leading hand and make him the sort of manager that the Royal Navy requires in the future. Because we need people like you, not just for your professional abilities, but for the character you bring, uh, bring around to the ship. It's noted and appreciated, and it's certainly been appreciated by me in the last year or so. Okay, thanks, Mister. Thank you, Mister. Right. Oh. Thank you, Mister. Great right. report. Keep going. Oh, sorry. It gets boring. It's stuck at sea. Kill it's that had done a while. Yeah, they, they said it gets easier and easier every time you go away. And that is a lie. Oh, it is a lie. There's nothing I can look forward more to yeah, uh, to getting home, see my wife and my daughter. That's all I want. Yeah, just get home and my boys. Yeah. It's a diamond, yeah? So you're flying home early? I'm uh, I'm going home next Tuesday. Yeah. It's, uh, which is a godsend. I, I could not spend another ten days on board this ship. This trip has just kicked the shit out of me. Yeah. Out of me. I mean that. Yeah. I, I just hate it. Every minute of it. No. Why this trip? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting older. <laughs> the only night I decided to report rounds. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. yeah. And guess it was off to the other day. And there's me talking to. I don't know how old he is. Yeah, but I had to call him sir. <laughs> my, my two boys are older than him. Older than him. And I'm stuck there going, I don't want to call you Sir, you know what I mean? How the hell can I, I call, call you him Sir? Well, you have to. Yeah, but you don't have to, you yeah? know? I mean, I remember days when you didn't have to salute a Wren, a Wren officer. Yeah? You didn't have to. Agliari pilot, this is a warship brilliant. Agliari pilot, this is warship brilliant. We're going into Cagliari at the end of the six month NATO deployment. It's the last day at sea for any command, it's certainly an emotional day. Uh, it's, it's rushed by, it only seems the other day that I, um, I joined Brilliant in Devonport. It's only 16 months later, but it, it only seems the other day. And with me departing, there aren't many commands for four ring captains at sea now. I'm, I, if I was putting a bet, I would bet that this will be my last time at sea. Uh, the sort of full feeling of what it means to leave the ship will only hit me, I think, perhaps when I'm doing the handover itself or stepping off the ship. I've been in the Navy some years now, and all of a sudden I find myself heading into harbour with it very likely to be the last time. I feel like an umbilical is being cut, really, because I'd much prefer to be much preferred to have taken the ship back all the way to UK, but that's not to be. The ship will live on, obviously, under a new captain. Well, we've got a mess dinner to dine out the, the old captain leaves tomorrow. We don't often get these, but when they do, we like to do it, you know, to our best, 100%. And when the lights are out and the candles are on, it will look even better, you know. Hopefully it won't go wrong. It shouldn't do anyway. Very formal. I mean, at the end of the day, once they've had the port and they've left the table, then they'll get up and enjoy themselves a bit more. But they enjoy themselves at dinner, you know, good food and good wine. But uh, it's quite a busy time for us now. I mean, it's non-stop now until about 11 o'clock tonight. Lovely bit of stuff, isn't it? Better if it was vintage. Is it certainly will. None of it will touch my lips. Just go straight in, misses the lips completely. What's your responsibility tonight, Andy? I'm working in here with Well, Judy. Anyway, Judy Stewart. But I'm in here, I'll be in here tonight serving. And then set up the bridge when they leave here so that we can clear up in here, set up the bridge for liqueurs, then clear in here, then they all come down in here and then upset everything again. And then we go up on the bridge and clear that up. And then about three o'clock ish we should be able to come back in here and clean up again. But we love it. So I've been told.
for this evening. We've got the mess dinner for Captain Rapp. Um, we're dining him out, saying goodbye to him in a, in a formal way. So I want to, I want to look spick and span. So, uh, as usual, Tommy Dakin's cutting my hair again, like he does every two weeks. But I can't have all that hair all over the place. It just um, doesn't look at all right. Particularly on top, it gets very wavy. And um, doesn't it, Bob? Yeah, it certainly does. See, look, there's one bit there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, square neck, yes please. Right, listen in people, all right? Starter, fish, joint and sweep. Starter is pre-laid. Bow tie. Lots of uh, painful lessons learned at Dartmouth. There's a young midshipman learning how to tie one of these. Because it doesn't do to, um, that is awful, that bow tie is awful, but never mind. It doesn't do to wear a false one. If you get caught wearing a false one, it gets ripped off, put into an ashtray and burnt. And then you get paid, you have to pay lots of money towards the mess in the form of port. Enough. Once I've done the joint, I will start on the wine. You two go straight to the veggies. Once you've done the plates, both do the plates. It's 11 plates a piece, OK? Port services. Andy to start this end with the prez. Box start the other end with the vice prez. Any questions? Lots of debate at the moment about <coughs> the privileges that, that naval officers get. Steward service and uh, silver service. It's actually all part of, uh, of being an officer, the rank having its privileges, and uh, I'll defend it very much. Andy staying to the last, all right, we've got the parties, but Andy hopefully will keep in charge of that and get it all cleared away, all right, mess games. At the start, if it, if it looks as if it's staying really late, I ain't going to start No, it's going really no, late. don't stay up, because right, no. you're duty again. Right, mate, we'll turn to, we'll turn right. to at five, both of us, yeah. by that time. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll all be gone by now. Be asleep, no, sleep down there, we'll just draw a room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this here is a present that was given to me by my father when I was 18. It's a really lovely half hunter. It's the uh, watch chain that my father bought me when I was 18 years old, which I'm very proud. Which will go to my eldest son when he's old enough. The youngest son will get the uh, the diver's Rolex, much better than wearing a wrist watch. It's time, right? 1928. Make sure I'm not late, otherwise I'm going to get fined. Okay, can candles we get the out. candles out now? Yeah, I'm about to do that. Ice water available, yeah? Some more glasses. Viv, right, you all right in there? Oh, yeah. Sorted, good. Good girl. Right then. And you know what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> That's it then. Very understated uniform, the Navy officer's uniform, plain, dark, navy blue, and these beautiful gold stripes. It's very striking. And I, for one, am extraordinarily proud to wear this uniform. The ladies love it. Yeah, my, well, my wife likes this uniform in particular. And uh, before my wife, there was a few other ladies that liked it as well. But, um, there we are. That's life. Is that anybody? No. <laughs> Doctor's late. Doctor's late again. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've just come to the end of my time, you know what I mean? I, I just want to be at home. I miss my wife and kids so much, it's untrue. Yeah? I, I just hate, literally hate being away. Yeah? I'm 34 year old, I've done this job for 18, 19 years, and I've been away, I've done seven month trips here, there and everywhere. Seven ships I've had, and this is the one. You know, it's, it's broke my heart. Yeah? Speaks. <laughs>
That's my little girl, that, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, she is beautiful, isn't she? Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It's me and the wife. She's all right now. I actually picked my wedding ring up from Barcelona. So we ain't got the bloody thing. So my two boys. Yeah. So I, put, I mean, this a few years ago, obviously. Yeah, but Paul's 21 in uh, February. Kevin's 18, yeah, hoping to join the Marines. Hi, How are you doing? On Friday, coming home. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I can't wait. You can't wait? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Dad. Yeah, what's that? I tell you, but you know about disco dancing? Yeah. We came second. Came second? I was hoping to be home for that. Yeah. But you came second? Well, so Mummy wants to talk now, does she? Yeah, bye. All right, then, bye. Love you, Rick. Love you, darling. See you later. Hello, darling. Hello, sweetheart. Right. Right. Yeah, you? Yeah, fine. Can you get me a letter about the dog? I ain't got nothing. The dog's been really ill. I think she picked up a viral infection, but she had to have eight injections over two days. How much that cost? Uh, nearly 40. Yeah, but she's all right now, is she? Yeah. yeah. I brought me turkey. You know what? I brought me frozen turkey. <laughs> 17. Turkey. Yeah. Six pounds. Oh, that's all right. Where'd you get that from? Summerfield, they've knocked it down to 34 pence a pound. Yeah. So I got one. So your lager's already to be drunk, your bitter's already to be drunk, your wine's ready to be drunk. All my own brew. Yeah, your own brew's done. <laughs> oh, are you lucky? Yeah, yeah, got a bit. We Friday back to work at Gibraltar first, didn't we? Good days, eh? Old rock race? Yeah. <laughs> she seriously thinks I'm doing a rock race. <laughs> Seriously, You've got more chance of platinum fog. <laughs> yeah, all the shopping. Is that all done? No! It's not? No! So when I get home, we've got a good Christmas shopping. <laughs> and you're the lucky one. Yeah, I got to be. Yeah, I'll do it all on my own. <laughs> Jack, I've waited every minute of this. This is not the only one, yeah. I can assure you. I'll see you Friday. On Friday? Yeah. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, darling. Can't wait. I'll be waiting. Yeah, I will as well. Mm, so will your son. Sorry? So will your son. Was well, he taking me up the club for a beer, is he? No, he just cannot That's wait for you to come home. Sorry, what's wrong with him? I think he's missed you more than he likes to prepare, and your daughter. All right, then. I'll I... see you tomorrow. Nice to be able to say that, isn't it? Yeah. I, I just want to get home, Jack. I know. Yeah. I want you home. Love you. Tell her. Tell her. Take care. There, love. Worst bit. Over. All right, left now. Clear the table. Pot. Coffee. And they do the speeches and all that. Mr. Vice, the Queen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen. The Queen. 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 Captain, sir, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted that yet again, Pierce, Lily, Kirkwood, Galpin, and the teams have done us again so well and that yet again we ask them to do it at reasonably short notice and on the first night of a standoff alongside approaching the end of a deployment. Yeah, yeah I'm up here again protecting the ship for another six hours. Make sure the Sardinians don't invade us. It's getting more like UK weather now at the moment. It's, uh, it's turning cold and nasty, up full of snot and all sorts of stuff. So I'm really, really not enjoying myself tonight. I can think of a hundred and one better places off the top of my head I'd rather be now. At least you've got your great coat. Well, yeah, it's a great coat, this. <laughs> Multi-million pound navy, and the coat's got no buttons on it. <laughs> Marvellous. Absolutely atrocious. So, to have come on this trip and demanded the highest standards of planning and attention to detail have been marvellous for the ship and for yourself to oversee, sir. There hasn't been a, uh, a point in time when I'm sure all of us haven't looked back on all the toil and grief that has gone in to trying to make this trip a very successful one. How well you set the standards and demanded those standards from all of us in the ops room and in the ship. 
you can be very proud and we would like all of us to mark somehow your time in Brilliant in some way that reminds you of Brilliant and ourselves. And I think we've actually, here Stuart, found a rather subtle way of reminding you of that. The paper is slightly tattered, I have to admit. Is it sometimes a sad thing for sailors to leave a ship they've been on? Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, every time. I'm guaranteeing, what, how long we got left? 18 months, two years, when the ship eventually uh, decommissions. There'll be a few, you know, wet eyes like them. Even from hard bastards, old bastards like me. You, know, you miss friends. You know, you make friends. You know, three years on a ship, you've got to make friends, haven't you? Yeah. And, when, and when they go, you might never see them again. It's a bit odd. That is a bit odd. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you all rise and toast our captain? Our captain. The water government there needs up dinner tonight to get rid of the skipper, send him off, so they'll probably be dancing around like lunatics. Of course, then there'll have no one going in telling them to go to bed like they do us. But uh, it's like in a blue suit, I think. So. As you can see, I'm not my usual cheery self tonight. <laughs> Being full of snot does this to me. <laughs> I'm surrounded by Sardinians who can't speak a word of English. It's been a, it's been a busy period for the for the ship while I've been here. Then on top of that, you've had my demands. I think some people have observed occasionally. I've got an eye for detail. And uh, and a uh, desire to have it got right, and seeming relentlessness to keep on going at it. Sometimes maybe uh, the hammer hits a bit harder than we would all wish. But anyway, thanks very much indeed for your uh, tolerance and uh, and definitely your your loyalty to all all of you because you have been. And as I said, it's been an extremely busy time. So thank thank you for everything, all of you, and for all the support you've given me. And I'd like to offer a toast to HMS Brilliant. Merrily, merrily, oh merrily shall we, no mortal on earth like a sailor at sea. He I hold when his ship goes along, give a sailor his frog and there's nothing goes wrong. Merrily, merrily.
Hi, my love, it's hi, me. Hi, hello. Rachel, do you want to say hi to Daddy? Rachel. <laughs> Hang on. Rachel, listen, it's Daddy. Do you want to say hello? Right. Oh, excuse me. Right, I'll say hello. I'll just blow a bubble first. Right. <laughs> hello. Hello, Rachel. How are you? Blo I'm blowing bubbles. Blowing bubbles? She's about to blow them right down. Uh, has, <laughs> she, she must, has she improved her technique? Uh, yes, she has improved her technique. She's been doing it now. Great. About 17 bubbles at a time. Yeah. Good. Uh, Rachel, are you coming to the airport? Mm. Are you going to come and see Daddy in his plane? Mm. Good. Good. Sorry? Oh, it was very good. It was excellent. What yeah. did they say about you? Oh, listen to that. <laughs> Any bad jokes? What? Any bad jokes? No, that jokes, joke, direct joke telling was lacking. Russ and I are not strong joke tellers. Not even bad golfing ones. No, actually, I don't remember golf being mentioned. It might have been. I can't, don't think it was. Do you remember anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yes, I had a thick head this morning, tell you that. Mm. But it was very good fun. And I've been given a, a really amusing sort of cartoon. Of you? Me and about a dozen of the officers all waiting outside trying to get them to see me. <laughs> <laughs> a caricature piece. It's really good. Uh, your art of management needs some polishing. I don't know, well, perhaps, yeah. No, it's excellent. It really is. Oh, I think Hope wants to teach you. Oh. Hey, I hope there's something. Hello. <laughs> uh, was that hello? <laughs> hello, Hope. Hi. She's almost walking. Oh, that's you know, great. Up the gang tank as yeah. well. Oh, great. My love? Great. Okay. Well, thanks. Lots and lots of love. Lots of love. <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Bye, Shab. Bye. 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 Thanks, Martha. Thank you. Right, move forward, please. Good <laughs> night, uh, I won't keep you long because I know there's a fair group of people here uh, and thinking about uh, getting it back. Hello, sir. This is all section. Do you have a good flight? Yeah, fine. This is uh, a. I did want to, to say cheerio to you and uh, to thank you very much indeed for all the support uh, that you've given me. A lot has been asked of the ship, and the ship has really come through it very well. And I, I've been very proud of how we've all done. And you've all served me very well, and I've thoroughly enjoyed being here. And thanks very much for everything. I must apologise the car in advance, it's absolutely dreadful. Is it? It's an RAF one. And it's well, we're using the right term. The boot doesn't open, it's absolutely filthy. That lot that's just gone now, they're the first to escape, the advanced maintenance party, they're going to go first, have, uh, have their bit of leave, what's the 15th now? They're going to have their bit of leave, and when we get back to Plymouth, they're going to be there waiting for us. And then we all go and leave for a weekend, and they're going to do duty. It's all downhill now. It's all downhill. Brilliant. I have command. Thanks. Man. Can you see that huge alpen-like outcrop stuck in the middle of the sea over there? That's Gibraltar. Some lunatics, there's about 70 of them over there, are going to run up that tomorrow. I can't see the point, but it's a perfectly good cable car. There's a road that runs right away to the top, and people just got the urge to run up it. Logic escapes me at the moment. You got everything in Gibraltar. I think Gibraltar's got the world record for more pubs per square mile than any other country in the world. There's only one main street we're running through it. They're all like off that and in little back streets. There's a big British community here as well. Nice place, Jim. Shame they let the Spaniards in. 
Yeah, tonight we've got HMS Brilliant and, and I think this ship's coming about 250. And we'll just patrol the streets and make sure that there's no trouble amongst them. No, because when they've just been back from somewhere, they like, like, a, they like to uh, let off a bit of steam. And uh, if they've been at sea for a while, they're not used to drinking. So, I mean, that's why a lot of them get a lot of drunks here. Especially if there's, if there's more than one ship in, they'll have fights amongst the different ships, you know, there's lads from different ships' companies. Ready for this, George? Yeah. Here we go then. Just relax. I've actually got a new Ashley United. It's one I've always fancied for a long time, since my FA Cup, but I think it was because of my job. But they're always in my heart, they're always in my soul. One of the additional problems that the, the visiting ships can find is um, every now and again they'll have bother with the, uh, the local civilian population, mainly the youths. It's, it's probably an easy target. If you can imagine, what you have is, is your serviceman who's been down the town, had himself a skin full and he's had a good night and he's returning back on board. So it's an easy target for them. You married, George? Eh? Are you married? No, divorced. You're all good matters, huh? Well, so you're keeping with the times, right? No, I am, eh? It's a trendy thing to be divorced. <laughs> it's a lottery tonight. Some lucky bass is going to be rich tomorrow. Seven o'clock. Well, he's, he's probably rich now, in fact. It's not deja vu. We are actually on watch. It's the downside of the job, but everyone on board at the moment, apart from me and a few others, and just generally having a good time. Just generally having a good time. Getting their ass tattooed, eating Burger Kings until they fall out their ears, and all things like that. I'm glad anyway, because I'm don't have to get up tomorrow morning and work. I can stay in bed till I don't know, 11 o'clock, I suppose. Another slow bimble down the boozer. Have a pint and a pie outside or something like that. Something nice and traditional. Right, George, we're almost finished here. Right. The last bit of the border on the emblem. There we go. Want to have a look at that before yeah, I cover it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Check that out. Oh, yeah. That's kicking. That's All great. Right. Yeah, that's fantastic, yeah. <laughs> Now it's, we're on our way to the, the horseshoe. We've had a report from one of the uh, members of HMS Brilliant Ships Company that he's been punched by a, a passing motorcyclist. Every now and again it, it'll happen. Whether it's to do with, with drawdown or the cutbacks, uh, a lot of the civilians used to be employed by MOD, and uh, we've been told that that's one of the reasons that some of the the, the, the local population are quite anti um, servicemen at times. As I'm walking on the street, it's a very narrow street. Um, a motorbike came around the corner very fast and knocked me on the shoulder. The passenger on the back knocked me on the shoulder with his helmet, knocked me back and um, refused to stop. It hurt quite a lot actually, yeah. And then he just like, you know, zoomed off so I couldn't do nothing about it. Apart from that, it's a good night. Yeah, it's alright mate, yeah. But they all as good as gold. <laughs> yeah, it's all quiet and do you want to head back to the unit for a quick cuppa? The ship's got the rock race tomorrow morning, probably safe for it. You rock racing tomorrow? Certainly am. <laughs> the height you climb is 1,285 feet, and you're climbing from 15 feet to 1,300 feet above sea level. That marker will direct you straight up this road here, forking off to the right, and then we start climbing, OK? In fact, you actually start here. <laughs> start climbing all the way up there, and then you come to a second marker, the second marker then, just past the casino, will direct you straight up Engineers Road, where you start climbing again, OK? All the time, as you're going up, if you think you're going to get lost, just keep climbing and you won't get lost, OK? <laughs> up this road there, which means you'll still be climbing. All the way up, round St Michael's Cave, sharp bend, where it actually does climb again there, all the way up. <laughs> OK, there'll be another marker. Along here, there's some ruins. and. You probably get some rock apes and that out. And then on the flat, and you've got about 100 yards flat, OK? If you turn around, you probably see the top up there, and that's the actual finish, where you see the white building at the top. That's where you're going to be finishing. Good luck. Right. Better. 
Not bad, it's Sunday lunchtime. We're sat in the broken now, it's got a whole day to go when we get back to the UK. You've got to tell me what you need here, you've got English beer, you spend English money, even English pint glasses, which is a bummer. But uh, the trip's not finished yet, we've still got to reach the Edison Lighthouse, and then Plymouth Breakwater, and then we know the trip's over. But then it's back to work on Monday. Just a, another chapter of your life finished. Yeah, Pretty short sentence, just have a look up there. It's a taste of home. Very warm, we're in the middle of November. T shirts and things like that. We're nearly home. Oh, no. oh my life! Dad. Oh no! Bastard! Hello? Sorry, there's no one available at the moment, but if you'd like to leave your name and telephone, they'll call you back later. Thank you. Hello, Dad, it's me. Um, I'm in Gibraltar. I've got a couple of days to go. It's 16 more for 10 o'clock we get alongside. All right, I'll try and phone you later. Shut up. Take the, the top of the rock? Yes, sir. Two ways of getting to the top of Gibraltar. You can either uh, take part in a rock race, which to me is an hour of arduous pain and so unnecessary, or you can go by a more traditional method of a taxi. It takes half the time, but altogether it's a much more fun way of doing it. Why? Why am I doing this? Have you ever considered doing the rock race yourself? Why? It, things like that, like climbing mountains and doing stuff just because they're there. People like Chris Bonnick could, could do that as long as he wishes. Me, I like to take the scenic, more pleasant route. This is the path of least resistance, I think it's called. Oh, up pace. This vehicle's at a 45 degree angle now. You imagine running up it. <laughs> no way. What was it? What time? Absolute madness. I just can't see it. I just, just look at the sheerness of it. No sense to it whatsoever. There's a perfectly good cable car. And at the, at the push, you can get a taxi to come take you right up there. Bugger off. Is that worth it, Tony? No. Bastard. Grinch. Oh, my word, this is horrible. I haven't been in so much pain for eight. These are the Barbary apes of Gibraltar, apparently. Bugger off! When these apes leave Gibraltar, the British will leave. Looking too soon for you, Popeye, I'll tell you. Beat me eight. That's all. Nick, hey, Billy. Quite dreadful. Quite terrible. That was the first time I've done it, and I had no idea it was that revolting. And it's, uh, I think it was my preparation was not quite up to scratch either. So. 20 cigarettes a day. Yeah, so, well, probably a little bit more than that, actually, in the moment. But, uh, yeah, a few pints and a bottle of wine and a big hefty meal and a big breakfast doesn't do you any favours either. We're still here now waiting for the cabbages. They're running up this rock. They're running up this... Uh, Size of this bastard! Come on, John. Let's be easy. Come on. 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 Come on.
What we see at the moment is my tin box that's been sat inside for nearly seven months. It's small though from up here, isn't it? Seems hard to believe in something like 48 hours time on my final stretch home. Strange old sight this, Cornish coast. The long time I've seen this. Going around this, this point, you've got Penley Point over there. You've got Plymouth Breakwater behind, behind me. And uh, it's always a, always a nice sight when you come back from a long deployment to see them two bits. And uh, that's it, the heart races up a bit faster. Uh, waiting on the, on the jetty when we get back. Uh, my, fa my brother, it's quite it's very nice. Uh, my dad coming down. He's ex Navy. He loves warships and things like that. And, uh, That'll yeah. be just ecstatic now, Will. All the families will be there waiting for us. The girlfriend lives in Plymouth, so. Uh, to her house, yeah. <laughs> Cup of tea, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Head support. The chips stay at 3, 4, 5. It's a bit numb actually at the moment. As if we've never been away from here and yet somehow in six and a half months we've, we've, we've crammed so much. Same place I Coming into Devonport now marks the, the end of my time in uh, Brilliant. And um, it's quite uh, it's sad in some ways because I think it's, it's probably the last time that I serve in a, a ship of this size. You know, going back to the small ship Navy. <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's a nice way to finish it, actually. I've got my wife, Joan, and my two sons, Cameron and Jamie. I'll be there. Good to see you. Definitely good to be back. That's me Monday, though when we get back on bullshit. Two daughters will drive me wild, the wife will have me washing the dishes, and I'll be looking forward to get back to you. <laughs> Excellent. The weather welcomes you back as well. It's standard Devonport weather. The only thing that's missing is the, um, the 40 knot drizzle. But no, it's very good to be back. Good feeling. Very good feeling. I believe now it's just a train journey home. Next one's the golf. It's good. It's been a long while. Wife and two kids. I don't know what they'll be like. Nerves is iron, I suppose. Well at me. Bleeding marvellous. <laughs> How are you going to be able to see the missus? I don't know, speechless probably. Yeah. That might have changed, wouldn't it? Me not be able to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> not very often. Nah, no, just well at me. Right, chaps, listen, eh? You're going to be called to attention. Ted, right? And you will march round to the starboard side. Do you understand? Oh, 
Bye-bye. <laughs> You've seen the last of me. <laughs> <laughs> 